This is Big Girl Pants Podcast, where we talk about women, health, power, and wealth. Hosted by April Melton and Kimberly Shapiro. We are real women with real jobs doing real life. Join us while we showcase inspirational stories and inspirational people. Come on, y'all. Put your big girl pants on and stay tuned. I mean, there's so much, I mean, there's just so much to it still. I've got to read this book. Oh my gosh. I wish I would have read it. First. Right. I know no, you're no like, I'm glad you didn't, so, but I wish I would have. I'll, yeah. I'll say this too, because you, you mentioned guilt, parental guilt. Um, so one of the one of the men who contacted me, I, I wrote a, an article uh, that was on a website, Hormones Matter. Uh, and this has been a couple of years ago now. But it, one of the things I talk about it in is, is I'll, I'll occasionally try to look up stories of yeah. young women who have been usually killed by birth control because it's harder to find stories on, on injuries. Um, but I wrote about this one story of this woman. And um, the day, the day it published, this man in North Carolina, his daughter died, and he found my article a couple of weeks later and, and contacted me, and so we we started talking and became friends, and that was one of his things was he 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 said he felt really guilty mm-hmm. that first off he didn't know his his daughter had gone to Planned Parenthood on her own, um, but he said he felt really guilty that he hadn't warned her about the risks of birth control. And he beat himself up for a while. And then he realized, it's like, wait, I, I didn't even know the risks. Right. Yeah. It's impossible to find the risks. Yeah. You know, if you j- just do Google searches, all you're going to find is how it clears up your skin or, you know, helps your, you have regular periods. Or you're not going to find the stuff unless you know what you're looking for and you type in that specific side effect. You're never going to find it. Right. Yeah. Is you that the, the part of the book that... Um that you recorded for the audiobook, but is that the piece that Keith was saying that we should play? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I should cue that up. I think you should play that for us, Keith. On the very day my article posted, a 20 year old woman in Durham, North Carolina, lost her life to hormonal birth control. Her father reached out to me and shared the horrible circumstances of his daughter Alex's death. Up until this point, I thought I had some sense of how tragic it must be to lose your daughter this way. But speaking with Anthony, while the grief was still so raw, gave me a new understanding of just how deep the pain can run. Their family was close and usually discussed everything, but Alex had gone to Planned Parenthood on her own. She decided to start birth control in January. Soon thereafter, she began experiencing lower back pains. Her mother took her to an urgent care clinic, where the doctors thought she may have strained her back while working at Whole Foods. They prescribed a muscle relaxer, which seemed to reduce the pain for a while. Then, in early August, the back aches returned, with such force that Alex ended up in the emergency room. The doctors took x-rays of her upper body and diagnosed her with a lung infection. The antibiotics seemed to help, but Alex still struggled with the occasional back pain and her energy levels fluctuated noticeably. A little over a month passed since the ER visit. It was a beautiful September morning, and Anthony stopped by the store to pick up some items on his way to work when he got a call from his wife, Lisa. Alex had collapsed on the driveway. The EMS were there, and he should meet them at Duke University Medical Center right away. As they waited for news from the team of doctors working to save their daughter's life, Lisa told Anthony about holding Alex on the driveway while they waited for the ambulance. Anthony pictured his daughter laying helplessly in her mother's arms with her fist tightly clenched as she fought for her life. Then he began to relive all the fond memories of Alex growing up on that same driveway, playing with her dolls, racing her sister, learning to ride her bike. For the better part of two days, doctors would fight to save Alex. Despite all their efforts, there was little to no brain activity. The neurologist told them the damage to Alex's brain was among the worst they had ever seen. She was pronounced dead on September the 27th, eight months after starting birth control. Alex was active and ate a healthy diet. Her only previous illness was when she got strep throat at four years old. Yet this active young woman died from blood clots in her lungs. The doctors informed Anthony that none of Alex's organs, tissue, or even her eyes were suitable for donation. He said it was as if a weapon of mass destruction had gone off inside her body. Wow. Wow. I got nothing. 
Mm. How did they find out that it was from the birth control? Um, so they were at a university. And did they the, ever attribute it to that? They had to do a autopsy. The the Well, they did an autopsy, and, and, and I mean, just her body was just riddled with blood clots. Um, <clears throat> Which is a side effect of birth control clotting, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, it, he, he, I know he fought with, he couldn't get straight answers from the doctors. Of course. You know, they had never seen anything like it before, right. couldn't explain it. Um, but, you know, that's that's been played out so many times. Um, I don't know exactly what the, I don't know if he, he figured it out or if they ever got any kind of straight, yeah, this was absolutely. But I mean, eight yeah. months after she started taking the birth control and she was an otherwise healthy girl, like right. what else? You know what I mean? Right. How does this just happen? Yeah. It doesn't. Right. How And I was just like, how frequent is that? Because, I mean, I know so many people who are, I mean, my whole life I've known. Lots of people. Hundreds of people well, have been on birth I think control, the but I've never thing, known anyone to die. So. Right. I think right. the biggest thing is that we have to, while correlation doesn't always equal causation, we have to be real, more realistic about side effects that people yeah. are having and blaming them on what we're blaming them on. Right. You know, like, I agree with that, man. Like yeah. the depression, yes. the the right. autoimmune issues. They're like, oh, I just have no idea where this is coming from. <laughs> Migraines. And it's like, oh, but you've been on birth control for 15 years. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, it's sort of like um, breast implant illness, right? Like a lot of women are experiencing like autoimmune issues, right. um, Hashimoto's, um, just all kinds of bad skin, yeah. all kinds of side effects. Right. And then they get their breast implants out and then all of those side effects are then reversed. Like right. they no longer have those symptoms. So it's like you sh- you should probably reevaluate, especially right. when you're putting a foreign sub- substance into your body and then expecting there not to be a reaction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's uh, I've seen a, a few women who joined the the Facebook group who when, when they joined their comments on on you know when women would ask questions about side effects or birth control and it was always oh I love my birth control this this and this. But then, as they started to see, it's almost like a group think kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know? And, and because. Well, those aha moments were like, oh, wow, I didn't even think about that. Okay, wow, I'm having that too. Right. The information is so suppressed. And, and a lot of women face this, especially on the depression. They think it's just them. Yeah. Because nobody's talking about it. And it's alone. like, oh, gosh, something's wrong with me. Right. Because you know, everybody seems to be doing fine on this. Right. And Everybody the, on and social the doctor, media looks normal. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and the doctor's never seen it before. So, it, like, gosh, something's wrong with me. Right. But then you get in a group like that. And and other women are are admitting it or talking about it and say oh and one of the women the other day answering a woman and she's she's probably been in the group for a couple of years and she was one of them who when she came in loved her birth control and she was like no you need to stop she was yeah. like I thought the same way I love my birth control and she said through this group I realized wait a minute and I stopped taking it I immediately felt better I felt not disconnected from my life anymore my, my mental health or got from better. my body yeah, right? but even like yeah. autoimmune she had, had autoimmune symptoms and, and they went away and, and the the weight gained you know she started losing weight and so it was like all of these things I had no idea that my birth control was causing it right but, you know and I, I think that happens a lot you know so that's kind of on the one end of the spectrum on the other end I, I'm you know the number of families I've met who who lost daughters to yeah. birth control has been, you know, you know, and obviously it's so tragic it 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 weighs heavier on you. Well, and you're but so just, close to that, um, that, not that network, but that that people who are experiencing that because you're in right. it, like you're writing about it, you're right. meeting people who are talking about it, right. you're researching it, you're looking for them. Right. So you're going to be more aware than True. the average person right. who's just not ever going to hear about it. You know, I just thought of. Right after I put my daughter on, gosh, this might actually have been right after she went on the IUD. I don't know if you remember this, April. Kylie had two seizures. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. My daughter's never had seizures. Never in her life. Right. Um, and then all of a sudden, she's working at the Crayola place. The and experience, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I get a call at work, and they said, we just took your daughter by ambulance to the ER. She had a seizure. Uh, we don't. We don't know what happened. We don't have any... Ex- hmm. That was never explained. Obviously, I took her to a neurologist. We did all the testing. Clearly, you do all that, those things. But um, there was never anything to answer why that, that that happened. And I don't know that the birth control was the reason, but I certainly know she never had any issues prior to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. I think, you know, once you start to become aware of symptoms and things like that you start you start to see it everywhere you start to yeah. see it everywhere yeah one of the things i write in the in the migraine chapter was uh, you know we had just flown to town for a show we were doing 
And as soon as I landed, one of the guys called and said that the producer had canceled our, our pre-production meeting for that evening because she had migraines. Uh, and then he said, you know, she, when she eats certain breads, it can trigger her migraine. And this was early on in my research, and I was like, oh, I bet she's on the pill. <laughs> it's like, and so, and so she's my client's client, and it's like, should I talk to her about it? And it's like, I have to, right? right? I have to. And so the next morning, she was feeling better and came to work, and, and so I started asking her questions about her migraines, and I was like, so did you start having them after you started taking birth control? And she was like, no, I, I took birth control for a long time before I ever had migraines. And I said, well, it's still after, you know, mm-hmm. kind of yeah, laughed yeah. about it. But then the next day she came in, she was like, you know, you may be onto something because my, my migraines got a lot worse after I switched birth control brands, mm. you know. So it's – the and and that's what's, that's what's hard to pinpoint on all these, right? Right. It, you, birth control is very idiosyncratic. You know, everybody's body chemistry is a little different, right? Yeah. So, so the pill she switched to, it doesn't mean it's a worse pill. It's just worse for her, right? right? right. But you, there's no real predicting. And, and even I kind of, you know, people talk about, well, you know, you can get tested for clotting factors and that, that way you know you're safe. It's, I have a little trouble with that because I think it's a false sense of security. You yes. can you can test for certain factors, yeah. but that doesn't mean you're not going to have blood clots. Right. It, it just, it just, it's pinpointing one specific thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, back when I was uh, diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, my rheumatologist, they, they do all the blood work and everything. And he told me that I'm, I have something in, in my blood or genetics, whatever it is that I'm prone to blood clotting, which is why I'm so adverse to taking uh, the vaccination because I'm like, ah, oh, that scares me a little yeah. bit. Cause I'm like, I'm already prone to blood clot. Yeah, exactly. So I, I mean, I wonder if, Listen, I'm, if we could get women to stop taking it, that would be amazing. But I think if they're going to take it, you should at least know if you're pl- prone to blood clots in the first place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Obviously, there's other things here that we just, you know, spoke to. Yeah. So it's not just that, but right. the blood right. clots is what's going to kill you, most yeah. likely. Yeah. Yeah. I think as long as you go into it again with eyes wide open, you know, okay, this doesn't mean that this pill absolutely is safe for me. Right. But at least I do know I, I don't have to worry about. And you know, your risk yeah. factors right. before you compound right. it with something that's obviously not. Yeah. Good for your body. So during all of this research, right, you start in 2015 after that conference. Um, what happened after that? Like you just start digging into all the information. Like you I, start... I started digging into it and it was funny. And again, because... this is not your job. This is not something that you got paid to do. Like right. this was just like a pure interest so, thing. Yeah. Just evenings in hotel rooms. <laughs> That's yeah. it, occupying all my, my free time. time. Free. Yeah. And, and originally I was so fascinated by, you know, by it from that night, my first thought was because video is my background. I was like, "Oh, this would be a great documentary." Ah, and so was, that's that's kind of what prompted me to start collecting all of this. Um, but then, you know, again, it was you know fighting those, you know, all those hurdles of the imposter of, syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who am exactly. I? Who am exactly. I to write this? Am I an authority on this subject? Like, right. I'm not a doctor so or I, whatever. I, I talked to a few different, you know, friends of friends, producers. I have a friend in Hollywood who uh, is his friends, and he connected me with a woman he knew because I felt like I, I need a woman partner sure. to to partner on the. And you need somebody with a period. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's so, I, I can't be, you know, so. Uh, and it was funny because they were hesitant, you know, and like his friend, she was like, yeah, I hate the pill. It almost killed one of my friends, but you know, I don't want to, it's too political and I, you know, it might make my life hell. I don't want to. And so I faced a lot of that and, and was starting to feel like, okay, this isn't going to happen. Yeah. But then I, I spoke with another woman who wrote for a, a website called Hormones Matter, uh, and because she had written an article on Nelson pill hearings. And so we had some things in common and we started talking and she was like, have you ever thought about uh, writing for uh, for hormones matter. I was like, oh no, I hadn't. So I started writing articles for them, and 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 it's like it was a great it was a great kind of valve to start getting some of the information out. And, yeah. and she was really the woman who who the main woman who runs the site is a PhD. So it was really great to run, especially a lot of the research past right. her saying, "Am I reading this right? Does this make sense?" <laughs> right. and, and to get that kind of affirmation of uh, I'm not a complete buffoon. This this is actually what it appears to be. Yeah. Um, so I started doing that, and then there's another website called Natural Womanhood who who asked me if I'd be inter- interested in writing for them. And so it just kind of, it was a constant, sure. you know, a, 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 kind of, like I said, kind of a valve and, and getting feedback from women yeah. to, who who read the articles and, and seeing how, you know, how, mu- how much this was going on. So it just kind of, once there was enough, I was like, well, I guess I should do a book. So, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And you mentioned earlier you have kids or two daughters. You have a daughter or two daughters? I have two daughters. How old are your daughters? Uh, four. 14 and 15 now. Oh, okay. So they're yeah. right at that age wow. right now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, what right. I don't say right do? at that age. They're a couple <laughs> years away from that scary age. Right. Right. But uh, yeah. It's but I mean, still within the age, do they both have their periods? Yeah. 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 And yeah, it's, it's one which of those things. Which means they're like, fertile, which means they're ovulating, which right. means that they could get pregnant. They could. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, and, and my thought is, it's like, I hope they've heard me talk so much about this that they're never <laughs> tempted to go on it. But, yeah. the, you know, the flip side of that is if they ever want to break Poppy's heart, they know exactly what they can do to break my heart. Right. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm going on the hope pill. that works. I knew that right. would break my dad's heart, not yeah. so it worked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hormones. Can't explain those. Right. Yeah. yeah. But what what will you and your wife do when you guys have that conversation? If you don't mind sharing. I think about this with my daughter all the time, right? She's right. six. Like, yeah. what am I going to do when she turns to a teenager? Or what am I going to do when she turns up the age where she has boyfriends and they're going to the movies? Right. You know what I mean? The movies. Right. The movies. Right. Air quotes. Um, I'll just say that's a conversation I probably need to have with my wife. Because we, <laughs> we've, uh, You're like, shit, yeah. I haven't even thought about yeah. it. Right. Yeah. No, it's... Well, and I uh, think about it, too, and I just... I don't... I don't know what the most effective method is, right? Like, well, I think it depends on the personality of the of the kid. Yeah, and, yeah, true. You know what I mean? I was just such an obstinate teenager to begin with. I'm a Scorpio. What you gonna do with that? Mm-hmm. Um, my kids, though, I was very open. Like in my family, of course, I was born in the '70s, so you didn't talk about it. It's right. like you just say, you know, don't have sex, abstinence. You know, like you just don't. You don't talk about it, and that's about the only thing that's said. Yeah. So when I had daughters, we wrote, we read books. I mean, starting in like the fourth grade of like these are boy parts, these are girl parts. There's pictures. Yeah. We the anatomy discussions. We talked about sex from the beginning. Like this is what it is. This is it. Very surface level discussions. Yeah. Clearly, when they were young, right. um, but we were always very vocal, very open, very transparent. And also, I will kill you. <laughs> many, many discussions around that, that fear factor. I'm not going to lie. Like I did instill a little bit of the, please don't, please, 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 please don't. Um, so I really think I was successful for the most part in high school. Yeah. It was post high school. Yeah. Um, well, Taylor, I think was, and she would tell you if she was sitting here, I think it was the end of her senior year. And then Kylie, when she did marry him, then, you know, they, okay. Both of your kids married the first person that they slept with. They did. Yeah. So, like, that's, like, the biggest success story you could ever imagine. Or I just really scared the hell out of But also, you have to think about, like, you know, again, yeah, planning on when you're going to have a kid, you know? Because, like, between, um, you know, your oldest daughter's first baby, did she get on birth control before she started trying for the second baby? Taylor's never been. A- that's not true. I actually put Taylor on depo. In her senior year of high school, at the end of her senior year of high school, she stayed on it for one year, and then she put on a lot of weight, and so she's like, no. Yeah. Um, and that's that's another thing. With Kylie, I've mentioned a few times that she's 25. She is not on birth control. Like, I'm not putting her on it anymore. I don't have control anymore. Yeah. Right. Um, so I just want to make sure, because it sounds like I'm forcing her to go. I don't have any control anymore over that. Um but Taylor went off of it after a year, and then she never uh, went back on. Interesting. No. But she That's also is a very disciplined person, and so she was capable of, you know, making solid choices for herself. <laughs> wise choices. Wise wise choices. And understands, you know, consequences where Kylie, that wasn't necessarily yeah. something. Consequences um, of your actions. But, you know, you can speak to that, too. You both of you and I both, you know, ha- experienced the consequence of not planning oh yeah not making good choices yeah so um that's where i just i i tend i tend to lean towards oh crap but what do you do yeah in that you know but when i think the the adolescence all, years i don't think not- it even has to do with the adolescent years yeah. i mean even with like you know because it still happens to adults right especially for women who are no longer wanting to have children oh my you know? gosh yes. Right. yes accidents can still happen it yeah. still happens like what are we supposed to do around i think at that point if you're an adult, like what you're doing, yeah, works because it, 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 hopefully, you know, that's what a, I'm saying. I mean, it's well, still... but I mean, like if you're an adult, <laughs> like hopefully you've got enough um, discipline in your life, and and even if you don't, and you get pregnant, it's vastly different to be 30, 35, 40, yes, and have a baby, yes. than at sixteen, yes, right. It's just vastly different, huge, yeah, and and. And the consequences are different too. You know, one they of the things, you know, I hear so many, so many young women being put on the pill because their periods are ir- irregular. I was like, well, of course their periods are irregular. Yeah. You know, they're still forming and maturing. Your body's still trying and, to figure right. it all out. 
Yeah. Well, and yeah. also, why are we not paying more attention to, but then what are you eating? Right. Like, right. Why are your periods your irregular? Look like the environmental factors that we, or the endocrine disruptors that we talked about earlier. Right. Nobody's talking about that. I can promise you. Nobody's talking about that. Right. And that has a huge impact on our hormones, our periods, our bodies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and people don't talk about that. And imagine Let's just put you on the pill because yeah. that'll fix it. Actually, uh, Laura Bryden, uh, who wrote a book called uh, Period Repair Manual, which uh. is, is, you know, shared a lot in women's health circles. Um, she's really great. And she's started writing some about, you know, watching, you know, mm-hmm. things you can do to like eat phytoestrogens, you know, yeah. include more nuts in your diet and right. things like that. And she's, Less she's plastics, a really great don't resource. Don't microwave in plastics, not right. drinking water out of plastic water bottles. And, right. Yeah. Do you know if we, we advocated more or if the government would even get on our side, which they never will because it's all about money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we talked more about diet and exercise and supplements and fixing our bodies from the inside and honestly getting to the bottom of why our bodies are not doing the things that they're supposed yes. to be doing instead of pushing pills. Yes. We'd literally bankrupt pharmaceuticals. Yes. Or yeah. the pharmaceutical industry. Ideally. We'd bankrupt it. <laughs> and, right. and honestly, frankly, even like healthcare, like uh, uh, insurance companies. Oh, you mean sick care? A, yeah. Sick care. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we don't we don't talk about that. No. No, we just want a pill. Write yes. me a prescription. What's the easy way out? Right. It's frustrating. Right. How much money yeah, are we going to make? Yes. Um, it's 1230, so I don't know. Um, I mean, we booked two hours. We didn't start until 11, but um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the answers are. I don't know what the new birth control should be, right? Like what we should yeah. do instead of hormonal birth control. But yeah, I definitely think that we need either an alternative option or we need more education. Education for but sure. But the problem, thing, the problem with education is that like <clears throat> not everyone is going to do what's necessary right like right. they even jordan peterson talked about this before too like let's say you go to the doctor because you have an infection and they give you antibiotics they tell you to take the antibiotics five to seven days well what is what do most people do they take like three days yeah. and they're like well i feel better i don't have to take them all five to seven days right and it's like but if but if that was something that, that if that was someone like your child or your pet or something that you were taking care of you would ensure that they were taking yeah. the five to seven days of antibiotics so right. it's like even though we know what we should be doing we don't always do those things so right. <laughs> yeah right. it's like so you true. can tell somebody what to do but that doesn't mean that they're gonna do it anyway i do think right. if we had more transparent conversations around it and like forget the whole abstinence thing let's just okay it's dead to us let's talk about the reality of hormones and how you're gonna feel when you're in the moment and things that yeah. you can do to to make better choices when you're right. in moments where you feel like you have no control. Yeah. Right? right. And then also what about peer accountability? So if we're talking about it and then you've got your peer group that's holding you accountable and it's not normal to just go have sex as a 16 year old and it's not okay. And your peer group is telling you don't do it. You know, I, I don't know if that would help. I think it would have made an impact for me yeah, as a I teenager. Think so. I think if I had all of my friends instead of all of us being sexually active, it would have, seriously would have made a. But big, do you think that that was from rebellion or no curiosity? Um, true hormones. Like we loved our boyfriends, right. right? I mean, I married the one that you know, like I lost my virginity to. That's my my children's father. I genuinely loved him, and so when I was sixteen in, and capable of love at sixteen. But also, exactly. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm, let's talk about that. That's a whole nother episode. Love. But my my point is, if all of my friends that were in my peer group were not doing that. I'm telling you, I would have had so, reservations because so, I would not have wanted to be the only sexually active girl so in my group. A, maybe a little more right. practical conversations about yeah. sexual education yeah. and what sex means, what and it can result in. just from parents. Right. Like, have the parents have those conversations with your kids. I think it's very important. My parents could have talked to me till they were blue in the face, and I'm not listening to them. Right. Right. I My peer group, however, at that time and at that age, I, I would have listened to my peer group. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right. I just, no. I just know but that that true. was impactful. <laughs> right. Well, show me your five time. friends and I'll show you your future, right? Um, right? Amen. What are your five friends doing? Or That's what are right. the people that are close, closest to you doing? I do think there's something to be said for keeping our kids in, um, you know, sports and thing, just getting them involved in things where they're with other kids that are making good choices. Yes. Um, That's huge. Yeah. But also, like, who says that we're not supposed to be having sex <clears throat> at 16? Yeah, I mean, Who our bodies that? are certainly wired for it. Right. And, and, or, and let's be realistic about, like, brains, either. We matter. have to be married to have sex. Like, that's also impractical. You know what I mean? Like, let's think about what really makes the most sense. When is it the most convenient for your body to be pregnant? 
when you're younger. It's like 14 to 18 or 19, something your like that. Bounce back time mm-hmm. is way better. Mm-hmm. You can physically handle it better. Mm-hmm. But it's like, how do we as a society grasp that and present it so that they can make educated decisions on their own? But again, this is what I was going to say earlier too, is like, just because it's the, it's the best thing to do or it's a smart thing to do. Not everybody has the same IQ. Not yeah, everybody can process the information challenge. the same. That's the challenge. Not everybody knows that just because this is the right thing to do, or this is the, the educated decision. That means that this should be my decision. Mm-hmm. Like there's so many different things. Yeah. But I think what I love about what Mike is doing is it's, it's he's educating. Yeah. So it's like, if you're going to do it, then, and I'm not speaking sex, I'm saying birth control. Birth if you're going to take the pill. Yeah then at least be educated and know the risks and know what you're signing up for and so that you can make a conscious decision and say, I know the risk, I'm okay. Well, and I think that there's a huge difference between taking birth control because I think what I read, not in your book, somewhere else, another it was either another article or something like that where they said that initially birth control was created for women who were like, just got married and they weren't ready to have a kid yet. So, like, they right. wanted to take it for, like, a year. Yeah. Or maybe two years, you right. know? But now we have women who have been on birth control since they were 15, not getting off until they're 30. Yeah. And they're like, why can't I get pregnant? Right. So it's like, uh, well, yeah, because it was never intended to be used for that. Right. But then more and more physicians were like, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Like, no, nothing, nothing's going to happen. Or you're, like, infertile. <laughs> and right. then they're like, well, you're never going to have a kid. So, uh, yeah, it's probably just your body. Just your genetics. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't right. a birth control that you took for, you know, half of your life. <laughs> right. Yeah. In fact, they get incensed if you suggest it could be the birth control. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It pisses them off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny, too, the way they respond. Like, you know, like the depot shot, they have a, a black box warning on it now that says this is not meant to be taken long term. You should you should not take it for longer than two years because of the effect it has on your, your bone mass density. But a lot of doctors, I had a woman in one of the groups I'm in um, not too long ago. She heard about that. She asked her doctor about it. And the doctor was like, just take a calcium supplement. You'll be fine. So don't worry about it. Well, I can tell you when I put my girls on it, both of my girls I put on the uh, depot shot for a short period of time. No one ever told us. They, no, We were never told anything bad about it. I kind of knew a little bit like this isn't something we want to do forever. Um, but the doctor didn't tell us. Right. The doctor's like, roll up your sleeve. <laughs> right. Here's your you shot. Know, here's your shot. Here's your so, shot. So, yeah. Here's your sign. Yeah, and it's amazing to see how many women have been on that for 10 or 12 years or, That's or more. That's insane. And it then is. guess what? In their 50s and 60s, they have osteoporosis. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. Um, so, one one question that I have, too, as a, as a man, um, doing all the research that you did, like, you learned about all the different types of birth control. Right. So, like, there's the pill... There's the shot. There's the IUD. Is there something that I'm missing? There's a Nuva uh, ring. The Nuva ring, the uh, implant. The implant. And did you say the patch? implant goes the in patch. your arm? Right. There's a patch. Yeah. I didn't know about the patch. Yeah, transdermal patch. Yeah. Yeah. They found many ways to deliver. Uh, yeah. It, I think it was probably around the year 2000. They really started trying to get creative on new delivery Diversifying methods. Diversifying birth yeah. control. And so like Esher came out, but it was pretty soon taken off the market. It was like a coil, a sterilizing coil. I remember that. Yeah, that caused a lot of problems. It was another bare product, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah, they started coming out with all these delivery methods. And, and one of the things that's funny I hear with like the IUD and the and the Nuva ring is, is I keep seeing doctors, women talking about doctors telling them, oh, the, the hormones are localized, so you don't have to worry about any yeah. side effects. So like, really, you think the hormones are just camping out in your uterus being home bodies? And, yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. so, and also yeah. like localized meaning what? Like our body, like our blood doesn't circulate through our entire right. body. Right. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, but it, it, it's it's a common thing that's said. But uh, did you did you see that like in your research that any one type of birth control had a different effect versus another? Like one was more extreme when it came to adverse reaction than another. Yeah, there are some that certainly stand out more. Like the you know I mentioned Yaz and Yasmin, the new fourth generation uh, progestins uh, seem to be a, a lot more. Uh, I guess a, a lot worse at at blood clot causing blood clots and gallstones. And it's a progestin. So does that mean that it blocks progesterone or 
what does that mean? It's well, it's a synthetic, synthetic kind of replacement for progesterone. And yeah, so your body, you, you, your body gets flooded with these synthetic hormones and and cuts back production of your so your natural of your natural, yeah, yeah your which natural is very similar to like a man that takes TRT, right? Because when you when you take testosterone replacement therapy or hormone replacement therapy, your body no longer makes its own because right. it has it exogenous, mm-hmm. right? Like coming in from the outside, right, right, right. right. Yeah. So yeah, your body senses that that chemicals there, even if it's not the same thing, and, and then it cuts back production. Um, and there, uh, yeah, I don't remember the exact. Like there are some where uh, the uh, I think it was uh, a stroke study where the patch stood out. Uh, depression seemed to be a little worse on the patch. Okay. Uh, so there are some things that they'll jump out on in, yeah. in certain studies. Uh, where one one product or one formulation appears to perform a little lower than than the others, but there's not, you know, other than depots. So I, I was invited to uh, participate in this uh, citizens petition to the FDA, trying to get more black box warnings. Because you know, is if you've ever looked at those pamphlets, I mean, they're they're yeah. like tomes printed in small print on these things. Same with the vaccine uh, yeah. pamphlet. They're right. 21 pages long. But but it, it still doesn't include, I mean, there are a lot of studies, you know, with lupus and, and whatever that still aren't even listed as potential side effects on these. Wow. Um, and so, you know. Because it, the FDA says the numbers are so low that they don't technically or legally have to include them on the list of side effects. Well, that's what we're petitioning. And and it was it's a group of it was started by an Ivy League doctor uh, and when the book came out I was invited to uh, to join them. But the the other thing is we're also asking them to take Depot off the market because it's like if if there's there are plenty of options out there as far as hormonal birth yeah, control. Yeah, true. And so if you can pinpoint one to say, okay, this one's pretty, pretty bad. bad. Can we just take it off the market? Especially yeah. because we you have know? 10 other options. Right. Like, yeah. why do we need this one too? And one of the things, the one thing that uh, that kind of drove Dr. Williams to that was there have been several studies that show that uh, the depo shot leaves a woman more susceptible to HIV infection from her partner. Jeez. And it's not just because not using a barrier method. It actually reduces certain... Uh, Immuno uh, genes, so it probably comp- or, uh, oh. suppresses suppresses and, right. and, yeah it suppresses your immune system, so it's more susceptible to an to, anti- to an autoimmune virus. disease, right? right. Yeah, right. Um, so for that reason, uh, we've asked that they take it off, and we submitted that in Oct- I think it was October of nineteen. And wow. so I think they had six months to reply. They reply back and said, you've given us a lot to think about. It's going to take us a while to dig through this. And then we haven't heard more back. So, oh, surprise. Yeah. yeah. So um, how many doctors do you think that you talked to in the research for this book? How many doctors? How many MDs? Yeah. Um, not a lot. Would you Probably say that... Three. I three? Mean, yeah. Would you say that they were receptive or not receptive to the information, depending on the doctor? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Not, I mean, specifically about this, probably only about three. But, yeah, I've, I've gone to conferences where I'll occasionally throw out, like, I, I talk about uh, one conference where they kept talking about prednisone. I yep. can't remember. I think I can't remember exactly what kind of conference it was. But, like, every time they would bring up prednisone, they would talk about... It was almost like a disclaimer that they knew they had to throw out in their head. You know, start with a low dose, uh, go through, taper them off, and all all these things mm-hmm. because you don't want to cause adrenal fatigue when they're from them taking the prednisone. And, and so I just started asking doctors about it. It's like, okay, I understand why they're saying this. What do you think? Should we be doing the same thing with birth control? Should we be concerned about that? And, and like almost every doctor was like, hmm, I never thought about it. You know, because they don't think about it. <laughs> and, and there was a doctor who testified in 1970 talking about oversuppression syndrome. You know, if you if you oversuppress any system of the body for too long, then it's just going to atrophy and kind of go away. And, mm-hmm. and that was what he attributed to the number of women they were seeing with fertility issues. Yeah. But we don't even, in our minds, we don't even think about, you know, it's like, no, the oh, correlation. I, 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 I was just, you know, I, and I've had women tell me, you know, I was on the pill for years and then I got off and I found out I'm infertile. I didn't even need the pill for all those years. Oh, you're like, like mm. uh, that's not <laughs> exactly what was happening. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. But, but we, we just don't know. We don't make those connections. And yeah. we assume, you know. Well, and you think about like, let's say you've been on birth control for five years and then you get diagnosed with depression. So then you add an antidepressant on top right. of your oh, medication so, with your so birth control. True. And right. then what else? What 
Well, autoimmune, autoimmune disorders oftentimes come with loads of medication, whether right. it's pain medication or whatever it is. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and then you're right. adding that on top of it. So you're basically just having a science experiment going on inside of your body. Right. And then expecting you not to have adverse reactions to those things, too. I'm always right. baffled by people who will take medications instead of trying to figure out what exactly is causing the issue. People who blindly trust their physicians. I have a friend, she will remain nameless, um, but she she's a traveling medicine cabinet. Like when you, and she's my age, but when you look at her in her cabinet or whatever, there's, oh my gosh, antibiotics and inflammation and um, it's just a plethora of over-the-counter and prescribed medications for various ailments. You look in my pantry, you will find, well, a lot of supplements, obviously. (laughs) A lot of supplements. Vitamins. But you, maybe Tylenol (laughs) for the occasional headache. Yeah. Right. And I'm trying to think if there's anything (laughs) for my husband's uh, pain pills for his broken foot. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But that's it. Like, yeah, it's going to take an act of God to get me to take medicine. Especially Uh, a daily medication that you're prescribed every single day. I will never. I will have to find out you know, why, what, what is it that is causing the need for this? But even like an antibiotic, I'm like, okay, but I know I have pneumonia and I know it's really bad, but do I have to destroy my gut bacteria? If I make a good (laughs) thing, a chicken noodle soup, I really think I can knock this out. (laughs) And I have really prolonged some illnesses and ailments and things that I've had by not taking the medication, by not taking the medication, but I always heal. Yeah. Right. But I'm and just you're like, strengthening your immune system. Yeah, yeah, I'm just not an advocate of that. And I do get a lot of trouble. People get mad at me, like, take the damn medicine. <laughs> get better. You're yeah. driving me nuts with the coughing. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, I mean, that that would be like my biggest thing, too, is just, you know, of course, the number one question is, what's the alternative, mm-hmm. right? Like, right. for people who are willing um, to do like the natural family planning and to find out like when you're ovulating, when not to have sex, stuff like that. That's an option. Right. Um, and I think that it's, I think it's more less to do with fertility and more to do with like the, the chemistry of your body. Yes. Like things right. that do happen during our cycle, how long your cycles are, what's, what's going on with your cycles, what could cause a really painful, a really long cycle. That means that there's something else going on, you know, cause there's a lot of girls that I talk to that say, well, I have irregular periods or I have terrible periods. But they why? last for 10 days. Yeah. They last for 12 days. And I'm right. like, and then they'd be like, well, then I turn back around and then I'm on my period again a week later. And I'm like, okay, something is wrong with you. You should probably get that checked out. Right. And maybe by someone who's not just going to prescribe birth control mm-hmm. right. because I think I feel like with every um, with every pharmaceutical medication it's like that's a band-aid right. you are treating side effects you're not treating a cause and most of this right. guys we all know comes down to diet <laughs> right. diet yeah. comes Lifestyle down to diet right. it's very what very you slim in it's your like body. Less, less than 10% um, of disease is actually genetic yeah. or you're actually born with it or there's, it's just um, idiosyncratic, right? Just came right. out of nowhere. Right. We just don't know what it is. But it's like for the most part, most of our diseases, especially in the United States in developed countries are lifestyle. I mean, you look yeah. at people who are on all kinds of medications. I hate to use my father as an example, but he's on a lot of medications right now. He's had multiple shots in his spine for uh, neuropathy and there's just multiple things. He's always been a heavy drinker. He's not an alcoholic, but he's just always been a heavy drinker. Mm-hmm. Lots and lots and lots and lots of red meat, lots of um, processed foods, you know, just right. bad, bad diet overall. Right. And then now he's almost 70 years old and surprised by why, you know, he's, he's not the healthiest guy on the planet. Yeah. I have an uncle who is diabetic, who has, uh, what do you call it when your skin is um, inflamed and issues. There's a psoriasis. Is that what yeah. it's right. yeah, yeah, Psoriasis, yeah. diabetic, also a little bit significantly overweight and on all kinds of medication. Yeah. And then I look, he eats a lot of sugar. He's constantly drinking Cokes yeah. and Dr. Peppers yeah. and going to McDonald's. And I'm like, so I promise you, <laughs> if you would switch to Whole Foods, you could probably fix all of that in less than a year. Yeah. In right. less than a year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But no, we're going to take the medication. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know what I would say to the red meat part? You can't blame red meat for what red no. meat and sugar and alcohol did together. But Yeah, no, yeah. but that's my dad. My dad's not sugar. So I, I think with my dad, it's just all like a lot more red meat than maybe his 
body, probably. Actually, like I'm thinking too, like bacon and stuff like that. Which uh, again, I mean, those some of those foods are like the most nutri- nutrient dense foods that you can eat. But if you're it, eating the healthy ones, though, right? I think if you're eating like grass fed and no, it doesn't even matter. Mm-hmm. Not, the, the, that doesn't even matter. It's just the combination. Like you, like you know, you can't blame the steak for what the the booze did. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. the combination of those things. Yes, those things yeah. do will clog your arteries if you're combining alcohol with red meat or potatoes or starchy carbs or whatever. Which so. was exactly that. Exactly. Starch yeah. with the red yeah, meat. I mean, with if you the sit down to dinner and, and you're eating a ribeye, which is extra fatty with a, and potato, a big old big potato with sour cream and, and bread cheese, and butter and beer for and decades. Then you're like, oh my God, it's a steak. Yeah, well, Freaking red meat, God, it's, it's terrible. It, I think it's the combo of all of those things <laughs> for decades, yes. and then now it's like, well, just give me the medications, and I'm like, but we can fix that so easily, so easy. Yeah, yeah. but anyway, here we are. Yeah. Um, anything? I am so grateful that you came. Seriously, on. thank you. Yeah, appreciate you. I mean, I feel- so before, but before we end, you have some notes here, and I want to hear. Oh what, yeah. What's oh, on I, your paper? I just in case we got into because uh, you know I wrote this stuff down so I didn't commit it to memory. No, these notes were just to help remind me of like the numbers. Um, you know, one one of the things I'll uh, I'll talk about from the numbers is like the the Nelson Pill hearings gave us pretty good prophetic testimony on what was happening. And one of the things that really came out early on, they recognized, you mentioned the fuller breasts. One of you mentioned the yeah. fuller breasts that when, when, when your friends took it. Oh my God. My you friends know, literally would say on social media, thanks birth control for my huge boobs. Right. And, and that's, you know, that's kind of the, the mentality, but they didn't make the connection that, you know, the things that were going on your, in your breast to make them fuller could also contribute to breast cancer down the road. Exactly. And so, so the doctors in 1970 who testified said, we're really concerned about this. We don't know what the chronic use of taking these pills in a healthy patient is going to do, but we are worried about birth, or breast cancer. So, And look at the numbers, the staggering yeah. numbers of breast cancer. Yes. So in 1970, one out of every 20 women was diagnosed with breast cancer. In 1970. In 1970. Today, one out of every eight. One what? in eight. Yeah. And I mean, and we don't hear about it. Girls who are my age are having double mastectomies because yes. they think it's their breasts. It is not your breasts, right. okay? Your right. boobs are not attacking your body. Right. Your boobs are where the cancer is showing up. Right. I mean, let's be realistic here. Right. And they're advocating for double mastectomies. They're advocating for removing your natural breasts. Imagine right. what that does to your body chemistry when you take your tits off. I know. <laughs> You're I cutting know. your tits well, off. It, I mean, it, it's getting more ridiculous, but that's one of the things Barbara Seaman said. I, I love our Barbara Seaman. I quote her all the time. But, you know, she was, she was a feminist who... When when she was young, her her uh, I think it was her aunt died from taking Premarin, and the doctor took them out in the hallway and said, "Look, you know you're you're in her family. Don't ever take these types of drugs. You know wow. you're you're susceptible to this kind of thing too." Yeah. And so when when birth control came out, you know she was active in the feminist movement and everything, and she didn't make the connection. Yeah. Uh, between hormone therapy versus uh, birth control, and so she started taking it, and her hair started falling out. And all of that, she she ended up writing, you know, several books about birth control and everything. But her her whole thing was when they started the hormone replacement therapy and, and everything, she said, I'm starting to think doctors think being a woman is a disease. <laughs> Hysteria. And, 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 Hysteria. And you look at, you know, we talked about the C-sections and, the you know, removing your breasts. And everything. it really does feel like they're treating being yes. a woman as a disease. It's an yeah. inconvenience to be a woman. Okay. Right. That's why they call us hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> right. And you're having a hysterectomy. <laughs> right. You're removing all the parts that make you crazy. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. that was... Literally, yeah. that's yeah. true. I mean, how far, they used to how tie far women removed up are we from that type of so thinking? So far removed. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's why I, I go back to the the paying attention to your cycle because there's so many different things that play into a healthy cycle. Right. And if something, some part of your cycle is not healthy, you are not healthy. Right. You should have normal cycles. Like now, and, and you know, this is, I don't want to get graphic, but like I... Since getting off my birth control, um, my cycles are now relatively healthy. I noticed that my blood is healthy blood. There's no dark, spotting, clotty right. blood, right? It doesn't mm-hmm. look like I'm having a miscarriage every month, which some girls that I know, mm-hmm. their periods are like that, or they were like right. that before they got on birth control. Um, it's fresh blood, and I get it maybe three to four days a month. 
Um, but again, I exercise every day. I take supplements every day. I'm healthy. I drink a gallon of water a day. I watch my, I watch what I eat. Like there's so many different factors that go into having a healthy cycle. Mm -hmm. But like you said, like being a woman is an inconvenience. They used to tie women up when they were in childbirth, when they Mm -hmm. were in labor, they would blindfold them. I mean, and we're talking like 1900s, like way back in the day, you know, again, still hysteria. They called us crazy. But like they used to blindfold us. They used to tie us down, strap us down to the bed when we were in labor. I mean, and that was in that that first uh, Ricky Lake documentary, The Business of Being Born, and just the way that they used to treat women when they were having children. I mean, it is an inconvenience. We are looked at as an inconvenience. And now that more women are entering the medical field, I also feel like it's a disservice because it's like, man, at what point do you say, I'm a woman... And I should probably not be advocating for drugs that have side effects like this. Yeah, right. What is wrong with you? Right. Like you're basically killing other women and you're not saying anything about it? For what? So your kids can go to private school? So you can live in a gated community? So you can drive a new Porsche every year? Like what is it that you're benefiting from? But I think that, again, we didn't have social media 30 years ago. We didn't have social media 40 years ago. We didn't have social media in 1956. So it's like with the... The emergence of information is the emergence of enlightenment, right? So, like, Mm -hmm. more and more people are paying attention. But as we can see now with COVID, more and more people are like, trust the government. Don't trust the government. (laughs) Trust the government or wear a tinfoil hat. Like, if you don't trust the government, you're an idiot. You know what I mean? So. I think I think more people need to be independent thinkers and they need to think on their own and trust. And I think that if we had more of a societal push to trust your body and to to invest in your own immunity whether that be for you know birth control or you know harnessing the the control to know when you're fertile and when you're ovulating and stuff like that because it's like Mm. okay there's been cultures for thousands of years that didn't have i mean think about how many periods you have as a woman right you ovulate or you have you menstruate from the time you're 13 14 15 my mom was 16 lucky (laughs) <laughs> didn't start until she was a late teenager until what mid 40s 50s when you hit menopause there are cultures there were standards and practices where these women were not getting pregnant every time they ovulated or every time they menstruated so what is it that they knew that we don't what is it that they know what is it that they're aware of that we don't because they didn't have 30 40 50 60 70 kids you right. know for every time they had a period So it's like there's got to be something more. There's got to be something that we can do that doesn't result that that doesn't involve taking an artificial hormone Mm -hmm. that then in turn causes breast cancer or autoimmune disease or depression or blood clotting. You know what I mean? Right. There's got to be something. I agree. You know, speaking to you saying independent thinkers like we have to be better about being independent thinkers and making choices based on facts and doing the research, etc. We are we're creating a culture of people who just do what they're told. We put, we pump it out on the, on the, on the news or whatever, but we, we are conditioning our population and our society to just do what they're told. Right. Just take the medicine or just do, just take the vaccine. It's a fear tactic where we just scare people into doing whatever they're told to do. Right. And unfortunately I think the number of people who are in that lane is growing. It is. But it's the sad part worse is... worse than it ever was before. The sad part is, I actually had a, a conversation with my friend the other day about this, and she's African-American, and I was like, why aren't black people getting vaccinated? And she was like, you really want to know? And I was like, yeah. She's like, because they basically ran medical studies on us for years and never told us anything that was going on. So similar to what happened in Puerto Rico, they don't inform you of what's happening. And then it's like, right. oh, but then we're just supposed to trust that, like, these medications yeah. are safe, or there was this a vaccine study is safe. Back in the... 30s, I think, 30s Tuskegee? or 40s. Uh, it was that, I thought it was sickle cell, but it might be. Oh, yeah. Where Tuskegee, they, uh, Tuskegee was the syphilis, right? Right. Maybe that's yeah. what it was, where they were killing yeah. um, black people through yes. uh, research. Right. Yeah. Around, it was that, okay. Is and, that then what they're it was? Like, and then they're like putting out advertisements now where it's like a drug dealer who's an entrepreneur who's getting vaccinated because he's so worried about all the people that he's helping on these streets. And they're like, yeah, this isn't going to work for us. That's, that's <laughs> not the right marketing campaign. You should to use for this at all we don't trust you we're not gonna do it yeah that's funny it is funny it was a pretty terrible it was in arkansas 
Mm. Yeah, it's so bad. Leave it to Arkansas. Or, or even the like forced sterilizations. You know, that's not too oh, far gosh. in our nation's history either. No, what it's it, not. The Mississippi appendectomy. Yep, where exactly. They would take all these women in and yep. sterilize them. It's. Uh, yeah. Or they would say things like, you know, black women, ha- black women have a higher pain tolerance, so they don't need as much pain medication during childbirth or during surgery or as much anesthesia because their bodies can handle it. And I mean, it's just trial and error, right? Like for the most part, we're still figuring it out. I'm sure the medical community is still trying to figure it out, but the hard data is there, right? right. Like, and you can tell when they're trying to cover something up. Right. Well, first of all, when they start forcing things. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Like present day. (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah. (laughs) All right. But yes, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. This has been Uh, enlightening. Yes. Obviously. Shapiro's going to read the book now. Oh, for sure. (laughs) I'm bummed that it's not coming until Monday. So the book is called In the Name of the Pill. You can find it um, on Amazon. That's where I bought it. Right. Where else can you find it? It's it's only on Amazon, cool. uh, and then we're working on the audio book that should be out soon, and uh, cool. it'll be on Audible. So yeah, when does that come out? Um, whenever I, it comes I don't know, out, Keith, we, yeah, <laughs> Keith. Whenever that comes out, <laughs> whenever it comes out, um, let me know because I will promote it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, of course, because I think, and honestly, the the biggest thing. It's funny because, I mean, it's not funny, haha. But I told I told one of my friends, I was like, dude, I'm reading this book, and she was like, you should ask your doctor about that, and I was like. That's the exact opposite of what I'm going to do. <laughs> You're like, that's why you need to read the book. I love you, but that's not the right answer. Yeah. Um, but she was like, you should you should talk to your doctor about that. And I started screenshotting pictures of the pages. And I was like, you want me to ask my doctor about this? You want me to ask my doctor about this? How much do you think my doctor knows about this? And don't get me wrong. I love my obstetrician. He's right. amazing. He's right. one of the, he is one of the best doctors I've ever had in my life and is very transparent, upfront. He's delivered thousands of babies, but it is what it is. Right. He's still an obstetrician and a gynecologist. Like, and if I'm trying to seek information from elsewhere, I'm not going to go to that source yeah. to try to get expert information from on something else. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And they, they only know what they know. They're only taught what they're taught in school. Right. Yeah. And I, I, w- I want to make that a point because we were talking about doctors and like, yeah. I, I don't want to, I don't want anybody to think I'm throwing doctors on the bus. And I, I really do think they're kind of victims of the curriculum too. Mm-hmm. You yes. know, it's been, it's so much victims controlled of their by circumstance. the circumstance. Dr- like, right. Yeah. The, the, they go to medical school and the curriculum is influenced heavily by the drug companies. Yeah. And as a doctor, I mean, if I try to put myself in their shoes, you know, you see a patient who's presenting symptoms or whatever. Yes. You have to be confident, right? You, yes. you don't want to tell a patient, she's, I don't know what, Man, don't what know. could be yeah. wrong with you, right? <laughs> you, you, have to, you have to be confident. So you have to be confident in your training. And if your training has taught you that the pill is nothing to worry about, that's what you want to believe. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and why would you believe anything else? Right. Because you're a doctor, right. which is right. one of the highest touted professions in this country right. in the world being a doctor right you're all knowing you know everything right but in reality you're taught to treat symptoms not treat causes right right same thing with cancer right i just lost my father to cancer i don't personally believe that i lost my father to cancer i think i lost my father to chemotherapy and radiation right because he was basically pumped full of chemicals for four years and then we expect someone to live through that you right. know what i mean right so it's like he didn't know what was he supposed to do? Had he ever had cancer before? No, but you know, societally, we tell cancer patients that they should go through and get chemo and radiation, and that's going to fix them. Yep. That's well, and think about a doctor that doesn't push, and I, sh- I hate to say that word, but is, isn't a prescriber of medication and isn't going to give you a quick fix, and because they're more holistic in nature, well, then they're going to be titled a holistic doctor, and guess what? They can't take insurance, and there, right. there's there's a whole lot and, of uh, well, this, ramifications or consequences to going that this route. This country doesn't support. It doesn't. Right. The insurance companies don't support because the insurance companies are also in bed with the pharmaceutical right. companies. And Yeah, and looking at that, I think that's exactly why we have to be skeptical. It's a great big orgy. Uh, I was doing... <laughs> <laughs> it is. They're all banging each other. I, <laughs> oh my gosh, she's so graphic. <laughs> okay, now I can't get that image out of my head. But there, so I, I was doing a conference a, a while back. It's, it's been a while now. But it was a it was a con- cancer 
uh, conference. And one of the presenters got up and she her she had her title slide up and it was um, the benefits of ascorbic acid uh, in chemotherapy. Vitamin C. And she, she started off by saying, my original title was the benefits of vitamin C. But it's not. But some of my peers told me that I sounded like one of those crazy naturopaths and I needed to change the title. So smart. Ascorbic and they kind of laughed it off. But it's like... But smart. But that's where our medical community that's right. is now. You, that's right. You can't, you can't acknowledge the benefits of vitamin C or no. you sound like a kook. That's we're right. So, really? It's we're crazy. so divided from biology and science. Mm-hmm. Why are they so divided? Like clearly they I can work together. I think we've answered that today. Uh, we've, we've had that discussion. Yeah. But it's just like, uh, yeah, I think that's the biggest question is like, it would only benefit them if you have healthier patients. Like, it would only benefit science if you have healthier people. We can change it. But it, it. doesn't benefit pharmaceutical companies, which support everything else. Well, that's the thing, right. though. We can change it. We, well, as we can the consumers vote with our dollars. and the people, yeah. we have more control than we like to give ourselves credit for. Well, for sure. right. But we have to educate. And right. we have to get people to understand and, and buy in, really, to, to what we're selling, telling, whatever. Right. Um, but right now, we're not the ones that they're listening to. They're listening to... Medical, Fauci. They're listening to Fauci's. Right. Plural. But if you don't get a mask, or if you don't wear a mask and get a vaccine, you're a murderer. I have a lot of friends who have said recently <laughs> that as mm-hmm. soon as the masks <sighs> came off, I started getting sick. And like, man, the masks really worked. And I'm like, or. okay. <laughs> or they just really shut down your immune system. And now that you've got it off and everything's coming at you, your, your immune system can't take it because right. it was literally not working for an entire well, and year or not everything being used. Was, and yeah. everything was shut down. So yeah. were you not going places and now you're going places? I think it's that, but I also think it has a lot to do with our immune system. Just we, we protected ourselves with, oh my gosh, I have seen sheltered women. sheltered ourselves. Yeah. I have seen people, I should say not just women, in the grocery store with gloves, mask. a mask, mm-hmm. face shield. shield. <laughs> and I'm like, your immune system is going to go into absolute shock yeah. when mm-hmm. this is over. Yes. You're going to die then <laughs> because you're trying not to die now. Yeah. I'm like, that's so crazy I know, to me. Man. So crazy to me. It's tough. All right. So. Again, thank you. <laughs> or did you have something else you wanted to add? I, think? I don't think so. Okay. I, mean, I feel like the conversation could probably about, go for a few more hours. Talking about doctors. But... Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, talking about doctors. I don't think that it's anything that they try to do purposefully. No. Initially. Right. I think that initially. once you're educated and you have this information and you're withholding that information, that's on you. But Agreed. guess what? Karma's right. karma. It's yeah. going to come around no matter what. But... I don't think any doctor goes into it to say, I'm trying to deceive my patients. I'm trying to purposefully hurt them I or agree. harm them. And I mean, if we think about it too, the, the amount of money that they make and the amount of patients that they see and the, the caseload that they have, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I briefly touched on it earlier where it's like, yeah, you have three to five minutes with your doctor. Imagine how many patients he sees a day, 30 yeah. to 40. Yeah. Right. Are they really It's a like, system now. The yeah. system has corrupted the whole process. Exactly. Yeah. The whole thing. I mean, even doctors that are well-meaning and they really care about you, which I really think most of them do. Sure. But I like what you just said. It's like, but once you've got that knowledge and you hold on to that yeah. and you're not using it, That's on you. you're guilty. Yep. Um, right. But I do think that the system has created or the, the is it the system has created this like ridiculous process. I think I got that backwards, but whatever, but whatever, like my doctor is well-meaning. She's a wonderful person, but she's only got so much time with you that the the insurance company has mandated how much time she can spend with each patient. She's got to have another one. It's got to turn every 15 minutes so that she can make money. Exactly. Right. Yeah, it is. You know, it's funny because you think about the difference in doctors. Like when the book came out, I started seeing sales um, in a few different countries. But like Germany, I, I started seeing several sales and I was like, I wonder what, you know, how, Yeah. why, why is it selling in Germany? What's the thing? But then I, uh, this OBGYN contacted me. Uh, from Germany, and he said, I'm recommending it to all of my patients who, oh my gosh, who that's speak amazing. any English that is at amazing. all. That's yeah. amazing. And, and he said he'd like to do a German translation. So, and we've, we've talked some about that, so I don't know if it'll become a reality. But, but you know, that kind of thing, it's like, I don't know how different the system is in Germany. It's but very he was different. A, yeah, it's he, very different. And they, they make a decent wage, right? They make like in between eighty and one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. They're not making half a million dollars a year. They're right. not living in huge, you know, gated communities and McMansions, right? right. Be, but they are government funded. They're government paid. They are educated, right? But right. they they don't have. There's no private interest 
for German doctors. Same with Italian right. doctors. I read this, I looked this up, I think it was like 10 years ago or something. I was like reading into different countries' healthcare systems. And it's like, there's no incentive for them to want to deceive patients. And they also have incentives from their governments to create healthier citizens. So, of course, they're going to educate them right. on something that's going to make them healthier because they get government kickbacks for having healthy citizens wow. and seeing less sick patients. Right. There we go. Yeah. Right. So it's like, why can't we do that? We can it's, do that. Yeah. But we don't want to do that. Yeah. There's it's no a money different in that. system. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. It's going to bankrupt an entire industry. Do you know what you're saying? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> right. I'm, I may not come back from this podcast. You know what I'm saying? Big Pharma's going to get <laughs> right. me. So Canceled. many people will listen to Canceled, this. Canceled, man. But yeah, thank you so much. So when the audiobook comes out, please let me know and I will, Absolutely. Yeah. number one, buy it, listen to it again. Yeah. Um, and then tell all my friends. Yeah, I'm excited to read it. Definitely. I'm going to have my daughter listen to it for sure. Yeah, I, I don't think, yeah. I think that, you know, a lot of, like I said about my friend, the one who was like, you should probably talk to your doctor. Like, they... We don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. But when you start to educate people and then they start looking into it and they wonder why, like this one particular friend, she's going to be so mad at me. I called her out on the podcast, but. Um, <laughs> no names mentioned. I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying her name, but like she suffers from anxiety and depression too. Right. And it's like, did like look into it. That's all I'm saying, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Like if you really think that there's no, there's no links, right? Read the book. Don't right. trust me. Don't listen to me. Yeah. Read the book. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Do your research. Yeah. It, you know, it was when the book came out, it was one of those where I still is like, I don't know. You keep beating yourself up over the same things. It's like, are, you know, are people going to take this serious? I'm, you know, same things. I'm not a medical professional. I'm, I'm not a woman and whatever. And the very first feedback I got was, was an email from this girl. Uh, and I say girl because she was young. Uh and she, it was her very first sentence was, you know, thank you for empowering me mm. to see the truth. And she said, not only, you know, not only have I gotten off of it and I feel better, but now I feel empowered to tell my friends and I've got the information to share with them. And and the way she wrote it was just so moving. I was reading it to my wife and crying because it's like, you know, that kind of affirmation of, okay. This is why I did yeah. it. This, this, is, this why. is what it's all about. That's yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. I love that. Me too. Well, Thank you, you like? so much. Yeah, my gosh. Thank you all. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I appreciate you having you wanna, me on. Yeah, I'm so pumped. Do the plug?